This video is going to go over the initial setup of your SMB device. So this is my client machine. You can connect to the SMB device through the IP address the device has on port 4434. The default IP is 192.168.1.1. If you see this message, it simply means the presented certificate is unknown to our computer. We can just go ahead to Advanced and select Proceed. This will start the first time configuration wizard. We'll go ahead and select Next. The default password is simply admin, so we're going to make it something a little bit stronger. You can enforce password complexity on the administrators. You can also select this to help us improve product experience. So let me type in my new password. It indicates that this is a strong password, well, medium, but good enough. At this point, we can go ahead and configure the device. It will give you an opportunity to either set the time manually or you can go ahead and connect to an NTP server to adjust time and time zone. We'll just take the manual settings. We'll go ahead and select next. Here we can name our appliance. So I'll just call it SMB R8020. You can add your domain name if you're using one. So I'm going to go ahead and type alpha.cp and we'll select next. Now we have an option to either use the local management or the central management. For now, we're gonna stick with local management. We're gonna have a dedicated video for central management. So for now, I'm just gonna stay with that. Here, we will tell it to go ahead and connect via DHCP. We do have some other options. One of them specifically would be PPOE. If you're doing a connection over a DSL, it will require PPOE where you would go in and it would ask for your user login and password, which is provided by your internet service provider. In this case, I'll just stick with DHCP and I'm gonna hit connect. I can do it later, but I'll do it now. So in a few seconds, it will require the IP address from its WAN adapter. And there we go, I got an external IP address. I can go ahead and select next. Here I have additional LAN settings. I can change my IP, my mask, but of course, if you'll change this, you'll be disconnected because this is the address I'm currently connected to. DHCP settings, you can enable or disable DHCP. You can change or customize your DHCP range. And of course, you can add exclusions in case you're using some static IP addresses that you've added manually to devices on your network. The administrator can access to this device either from the LAN or VPN connections. If you want, you can add internet as well. You can also add specific IP addresses, any, if I'll go ahead and add a new address, it will pull my IP address of my host, so then I can have it more strict. For now, I'm gonna stay with any IP address. Your appliance is going to be registered in the user center and whenever this MAC address goes to the user center, it will actually get you the correct license and will pull it out of your user center account. So in this case, I'm actually going to stay with my evaluation license. We'll skip that activation for now. Software blades activation. Here we can select which blades we want to enable or disable, it's up to us. By default, everything is going to be enabled, but you can turn some of those features off. We'll go ahead and select next. Here we have the summary. So we have internet connection. We have the trial license. I can go ahead and select finish. So it takes a few seconds and then you're gonna get this interface. This is our new interface. If you used earlier versions, they look a little bit different. We'll go through all of these different options later on in this course so you'll have a chance to see it all. Let's take a quick look at the access policy. We're allowing traffic to the internet on all services, allowing traffic between internal networks, we're blocking incoming traffic. Application and URL filtering, it's enabled. If I want, I can go ahead and add more options. 
If I'll go to NAT, I can see that NAT is enabled by default. So if I'll go ahead and open Facebook, for example, you can see that it works. I have internet connection because as I mentioned before, the SMB is pre-configured out of the box. You plug it in and everything works. In later modules, we'll go over all of the other options that we have here. This concludes the installation module.